Hello everyone, myself Diksha from Biotechnica. I'm here to help you in giving you details about some top institutions where you can pursue your PhD from. So before starting this video, I want to give you some highlights of this weekend. So basically, this video is sponsored by Biotechnica Walls Jalajis platform regarding biosciences. So you can get details of all the job, of uh, all the recent advancement and trends that is happening in the field of biosciences through the app. You can download the app, you can visit our website or you can you visit the help desk number that has been provided in the website. So some of the details of this weekend is that we are organizing a workshop that is available. The details of the workshop that has been organized is available in the stores biotechnicaorgcollections.com. So you can go to the web workshop webinars and you can get details of the workshop that is available. And also you can follow the internship program that has been provided for in the website. So basically all in one R&D internship starts from 27th of December. So you can get details about the internship. You can dial the number 08050997000 or you can email info at the rate biotechnica org to know more about the internship. Now, for the students who are preparing for CSI and examination. So we are organizing a drone batch for CSI and aspirant and we are providing the scholarships. So you have to just pay monthly as low as 4,000 rupees and you can get one year of subscription to Drona Batch. Also, the Drona Scholarship is available for the meritorious students. Next point is you can get all the workshop and one internship for free with this batch. So it's a really good offer. You can get all the workshop and one internship really free if you are enrolled in this batch. You can call on number one eight double zero one two double zero one eight one eight for more details or you can dial one zero eight zero five zero double nine seven triple zero even you can email us on info at the red biotechnica.org so now Moving ahead with the topic, so why we need to do a PhD? Why it is necessary to do a PhD if you are a master's student and if you are thinking, if you are confused if you want to do a PhD or not, I'm here to give you some opinion that I feel is necessary if especially you are thinking of doing a PhD, especially if you are confused if you want to do a PhD or not. So the first and foremost thing is doing a PhD will boost your experience in the relevant field, in the relevant field or the subject field that you have been studying from the past five years. It highlights your CV because it gives you a doctorate degree which is very prestigious and always you will be recognized on the basis of the doctorate degree that has been given to you. Next thing is it will develop, it will encompass the research skills in you, it will imbibe research skills inside you which is important, which is important for your development as a scholar, for your development as an educator, for your development as a scientist. You can gain a vision because basically you are spending four, five, six year in a topic that has, that you have provided, that has, you have basically put all your efforts upon from the past five years, six years. So you are getting a vision, you are getting a research skill, you are getting a vision regarding the subject domain, you are getting a region, a vision uh, regarding the life. So gaining a vision is important. It is important to make you a better person, to make you a productive person in your sphere of life. Next thing is you can learn consistency by time. Being consistent is very important, especially if you are doing a PhD. For five years, for six years, you are doing an experiment, you are troubleshooting those experiments. So you have to be consistent, you have to be patient. Without consistency, five year long journey will be in vain. So you have to be consistent. So especially if you are doing a PhD, you will learn consistency with time. You will be resistant to failure because Startingly, during our starting days of uh, preparation, during our starting days of uh, master's degree or when we complete our post-graduation, we are very much impatient. We, we can't deal with failure. We basically think that we are not able to, we are not capable to handle the failure that has been, that we deal with. So basically, if you are doing a PhD, if 
you are doing a work for five years constantly, then you are learning how to resist with failure. And this is a life lesson you should learn. So dealing with failure, being resistant to failure and not letting that failure affect you is a lesson that will help you in growing your perspective, in growing your career, in growing you as a person throughout your life. So it's very important to be resistant to failure. So basically, doing a PhD is a long journey. So it starts from a lot of obstacles and then leads to a degree that is provided to you. So it's not basically a degree, it's an experience, it's a vision. So if you are thinking of doing a PhD, you should know exactly what all are the institutions where you can approach, where you can approach your efforts so that you can get selected and you can do PhD in a most effective way. So some of the institutions that are top most institutions in India to do your PhD in biological sciences, I'm here to give you an insight about it. So the first institution is ISE. As the name suggests, ISC is a very renowned, prestigious institution located in Bangalore, Karnataka. And it has uh, the, this, the research scholars, the scientists, the professors here have a very good HI index if you will ta talk about the journals, the, if you will talk about the public, publication in the reputed journals. So it is located in Bangalore, Karnataka. And the entrance exam. So basically, when we talk about institutions where you can grab your PhD, students ask how to get into that institution. So basically, every institution has their own way of enrollment, has their own way of admitting the PhD students. So IAC conducts... Uh, now, they don't conduct their own entrance examination. Sometimes they will ask you for a written examination only if you uh, meet their eligibility criteria of getting enrolled as a PhD student. So basically, if you are TIFR eligible uh, qualified, if you are having a high rank in GATE, you can definitely apply to ISC. Also, you can apply if you have CSIR JRF, DBT JRF, ICMR JRF. So if you have your own fellowship or if you are high score, if, you, if your score is higher than 700 in GATE examination or if you have qualified TIFR JGBs with higher rank and if you're having a fellowship, you can definitely apply to Indian Institute of Science. The selection process would be interview. Sometimes when there are a lot of students, they might uh, shuffle the uh, selection process, they might start with written test or SOP or then uh, interview. So there would be interview, uh, mostly there are two rounds of interview and the research areas of ISC is microbiology, cell biology, reproductive biology, genetics, microbiochemistry as well as neurobiology. So these are the research areas uh, that, uh, that are research interests that are mentioned in the ISC website. These are the research areas where you can pursue your PhD upon. So if you are interested in these research areas, you can definitely go and fill the application form of Indian Institute of Science. Now, the second institution is National Center for Biological Sciences. If you want world-class laboratory, laboratory facility with world-class innovative ideas, you can go to NCBS Bangalore. It is located in Bangalore. It is part of TIFR, but it is very prestigious institution if especially concerned with biological sciences. As the name suggests, it is exclusively for biological sciences. So if you are having interest in cell biology, neurobiology, transdisciplinary biology, structural or computational biology, ecology or evolution, you can definitely visit their website. You can search for the PIs that are available. You can apply to the, uh, you can apply through different DJGBs. So basically they conduct the examination through TIFR DJGBs. They don't have their own intake. So if you have uh, TIFR DJGBs, you can uh, qualify the examination. Then there would be a round of uh, where they will ask you to uh, write an SOP, write a statement of purpose, why you want to join in CBS. And then there would be two rounds of interview. Also, if you are higher, if you have a higher uh, CSI or net rank, or if you have a higher uh, like uh, gate rank, then also you can apply. But the rank should be really high. You should be among the top 10 students or among the top 1% students that have exam that have qualified the examination. So this was about uh, NCBS Bangalore. Now, the main branch, Tiffer Bombay. So, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai, 
is a prestigious institution not only for biological sciences but also for mathematical sciences they are operated by uh, department of atomic energy the government of india so it is located in mumbai maharashtra and if you are specifically willing to do a phd in biological sciences you have to qualify tifer jgbs examination also you can go through direct channels such as uh, if you have top uh, 10 if you are under the top 10 student who have qualified csir jrf or if you had a, a top student who have qualified gate examination you can go through this channel also the selection process again you have to write an sop and then you have to uh, attend the interview the interview are generally roll on interviews they will ask you to uh, give interviews in uh, in a one week span of time so there will be two or three rounds of interview and the research areas where you can apply is cell biology neurobiology biochemistry genetics and developmental biology so these are the uh, domains that uh, are these are the research areas that are available in tata institute of fundamental research mumbai where you can easily search for the labs and you can apply now the next one is dbt in stem institute of stem cell and regenerative medicine it is an autonomous institution of uh, department of Bi biotechnology government of india also it is a part of uh, tifer so basically ncbs in stem have a joint doctoral program also and in stem have separately a doctoral program so it is also located in karnataka and the entrance exam is again through tifer jgbs so if you are qualified tifer jgbs you can again start uh, with writing a sop and then attending the interview if your sop gets selected and then uh, in during the mid year they have uh, they will uh, again ask for application so during the mid year if you have a csir net uh, jrf score if you have a high gate rank also you can apply also the research areas of dbt in stem is mostly focused on cardiovascular biology regenerative medicine as well as stem cell biology so if you are interested in these research domain you can definitely apply to dbt in stem next institution is in institute of technology bombay as this name suggests iit has always been renowned especially if you want to do a phd or if you want to do your research if you want to pursue a research career in iit so basically iit is very renowned so i am talking about iit bombay specifically because they have a very good department related to biophysics computational biology biochemistry and related domains so if you are interested in bioprocess engineering biomedical engineering if you are interested in enzymology biochemistry cell biology you can go to uh, iit bombay also so the intake so mostly iits uh, will take mass intake from uh, the students who have qualified gate so your score should be higher than 400 and you can apply through um, it uh, bombay portal so they will open the application process for the phd and other intake is jrf if you have qualified jrf even if you are not having a good rank good score in gate and if you are qualified jrf then def definitely if you can try you can give your sop you can give your research proposal you can give your synopsis and if they select you you have a higher chances of being selected so the research areas i have mentioned they are mostly focused on structural biology computational biochemistry enzymology as well as cell biology so you can definitely go for it bombay if you have research interest in these domains next one is national center for one second yeah national center for cell sciences national center for cell sciences is a reputed institution especially if you are talking about research interest in patho pathogen biology as well as cell biology it is located in uh, pune and it is affiliated to savitri bai phule pune university the entrance examination is through tifer jgbs they don't conduct their own entrance examination although they conduct their own intake if you have qualified through any of the own fellowship examination that has been uh, mentioned uh, that has been uh, that that are usually conducted in india so if you are dpt jrf you are icmr jrf you are csir jrf if you have your own fellowship you can definitely go and apply to nccs pune the selection process is again interview sometimes they will ask for an sop and the research areas are again cell biology molecular and pathogen biology biology as well as transdisciplinary biology so these are the domains which uh, these are the research areas that are available in nccs pune the next one is indian institute of education science and research pune 
Iser Pune. Among the Isers, Iser Pune has a better perk because they have some of the department and labs really well. So if you want to go and pursue your career in cell biology, you, have in, you are interested in cell biology, you are interested in genetics, pathogen biology, you are interested in transdisciplinary biology, you can definitely go to Iser Pune. They again take the PhD scholars through TAFER JG Bills score, but they won't, uh, you can't apply through TAFER JG Bills. So basically they will shortlist the students who have a higher rank in TAFER JG Bills. So if you are just qualified TAFER JG Bills and if you are applying to ISAP Pune, then your chances are little less. So you should have your own fellowship. You should have a higher rank. So in that situation, you are having a own fellowship. They will ask you for writing an SOP and they will uh, take your interview. So it's better if you have an own fellowship, then the chances of you being selected in ISAP Pune would be higher. The next one is National Institute of Immunology. National Institute of Immunology is specifically uh, famous for their research in immunology, cancer biology. So if you are interested in immunology, if you are interested in immunotherapy, if you are interested in cancer biology, you can go to NII, which is located in New Delhi, India. So the entrance exam is Again, through deferred judgeables, if you are qualified deferred judgeables, you can go and attend the interview. Also, if you have um, any fellowship, you can attend. Also, the benefit of uh, doing a PhD in NI is uh, that you can give a separate entrance test, the test that has been conducted by NII. So, NII conduct separate ent entrance test for the students who are willing to do a post uh, to do a PhD in NII. So. Uh, the application process are usually, usually they uh, start uh, applicating the students in November or December and the exam is conducted in the month of March or April. This was about NIA. So the research area is again immunology, cell biology, cancer biology as well as transdisciplinary biology. So you can definitely go for NIA if you are interested in immunology as well as cancer biology. The next institution is JNU. So, as the name suggests, people will say why JNU, JNU is good for arts, it's not good for science, but you don't know they have a really good department if you are talking about bi biotechnology, especially they have a separate exclusive department for molecular medicine. So, if you are interested in drug development, if you are interested in molecular medicine, you can go to JNU. They have good departments in life sciences facility, uh, facility also. So, biotechnology, life sciences as well as molecular medicine. So, you can go to any of them and you can go, you can grab the opportunity of being enrolled into those labs and being enrolled as a PhD student in Jawaharlal Nehru University. So basically entrance exam, they conduct their own entrance exam, JNUA. So JNU entrance examination. So this is the examination that they conduct. Except that if you have your own fellowship, you can go, you can direct appear for the interview that, uh, that they take. So if you have CSI or JRF, you have DBT JRF or you have ICM or JRF, you can go and attend the interview. Last one is CCMB. CCMB stands for Center for Cell and Molecular Biology that is located in Hyderabad, Telangana. So the entrance exam through which you can get the opportunity to do a PhD in, uh, in CCMB is differ JJ Bills, but they conduct their own entrance examination too if you are qualified or if you have your own fellowship. So if you have your own fellowship, CCMB conducts their own written test and then they ask for students to come for interview based on the merit list that they usually release. So the selection process is interview plus the written test, uh, test that they conduct. And the areas of research is cell biology, molecular biology, pathogen biology. So they have a very good cell, uh, they, they have a very good research domain in molecular diagnostics and cell biology as well as molecular bi biology. So if you are interested in doing your PhD in, the, in these areas, in these research areas, you can surely go and apply to CCMB Hyderabad. So these were the institutions that are top most, these are, were the institutions where you can easily go apply, but the selection process would be a bit hectic. It would be a bit hectic for you, but you can easily apply, you can at least, you can get a knowledge about, you can go and go and uh, view the campuses, you can go and meet the scholars and you can get a better idea. If Even if you're not getting selected, you can get a better chance of being selected the next time. So don't use your, lose your hope, always stand strong and try to apply in all the places that I have mentioned. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you like this video.